Boy Mates! Welcome on board Royal Caribbean's Navigator of the Seas, a Voyager class ship that has received its royal amplification, so it is packed to the gills with all kinds of fun stuff to do on board. We are here for a seven night Mexican Riviera sailing, but for today's video, we wanna take you around and give you a full and complete ship tour, show you all the different venues, all the fun stuff there is to do on board. So we're gonna take it deck by deck. Let's go ahead and start. We'll head down, head to deck number one, and then work our way back up to the top. So let's go ahead and begin the tour. Royal Caribbean's Navigator of the Seas. All right, so deck number one is where the fun begins. We see here on the map, not too much to show per the usual. We have boarding areas at the forward elevators and stairs and the midship elevators and stairs if you are in port and disembarking at the uh, different ports of call. But only other thing to show here on deck one, access via those midship elevators and stairs. That is the medical facility. You see the green cross right there and the words medical facility. They do have a display board outside with different information. Their hours and contact information are posted there. And then you can head right inside through there if you need to visit the medical facility. But that's it for deck one. Let's head up to deck two. Up on deck two now, and this seems like a good time to explain some navigational aspects. Because this is a Voyager class ship and it includes Studio B, that means that we will not be able to transverse deck two. You see the break there? That's also the case on deck three. You will not be able to go from midship elevators to forward elevators or vice versa. That will be blocked as a crew only area. So what you have to do is go up to deck four or a higher deck, walk across, then come back down. So that's what I'm gonna have to do right now because I'm in the back, I'm at the midship elevators on deck two. There's nothing to see here. Only one thing on deck two and it's at the forward. So I'm gonna go up to deck four, walk across, come back down and we'll take a look at that. Hey, back on deck number two now, and you see here I am forward. So just once again, quick recap, was in the back, went up to four, across, and then back down here to deck number two. So here at the forward part of deck two, we will find two things. One is the Crown and Anchor Society Loyalty Ambassador Desk with their hours of operation posted there. So if you need to talk to someone about those wonderful Crown and Anchor benefits, this is the place you wanna come during their hours of operation. Now behind us, we will find the conference center. So of course, if you have some business to attend to, you're gonna have a private event, anything like that, you can use the conference center. You'll see it's pretty much just a straight hallway here. And then they have the various conference rooms off to the side. So I think they have usually four of them. And that looks to be the case here. And you see they got something set up in there for that, having an event right now. So if you need to do, again, need to do business, you can have a private function, a party or something like that, you can speak to, uh, the service team on board about renting out this conference center space and having your meeting or event or whatever it might be. And that's going to do it for deck number two. Let's head up to deck number three. Deck number three is where we be. And you can see once again, we're going to have the same issue because of Studio B. This is a crew only area. We will not be able to walk across deck three. So I'll show this part first. But when we go to this part, I'm going to go, have to go back up to four, back across and back down. But that'll be the last time we have to talk about that. So that's good. Once we're up on deck four and higher, we're not dealing with that kind of stuff anymore. So here, forward part of deck three, just some staterooms. And one other thing to show here is the theater. So no fun, fancy, specific name for this theater on this ship, just called the Royal Theater. It is two tiered, so you can access it here on deck three or the upper level on deck four. Theater is currently closed, but we did come in during another point of the journey. So you can see here inside those two different levels, higher and lower, see the stage there in the middle, that beautiful curtain, and I love the rainbow colorful lights going around the stage. It just looks awesome in there. It's a great design. One of my favorite looks for a theater on board a Royal Caribbean ship. Big fan. All right, and that's it in the forward part of deck three. So once again, I'm gonna go back up, go across to deck four, and then we'll head back down to three and finish up in the midship and rear section. All right, that was my last drawn across. So now I'm back on deck three, now in the midship area. So let's turn and head, like we're gonna head back forward because there's only a couple of things to see here and then we'll end in the very aft section of deck three. So when we come to this landing area, this is the, uh, beautiful artwork kind of almost like a chandelier thing goes all the way up to the promenade and those beautiful staircases as well but located below that is the art gallery 
So they'll put various pieces of art here on display. Sometimes they have scavenger hunts, sometimes they have auctions. You can purchase any of these pieces of art, uh, obviously at an additional cost. And some of them are quite large additional costs, but that's understandable, it is art. Across from the art gallery, we do have the photo gallery. So this is where you can come up, use any of the screens, just swipe your CPAS card. It'll bring up any of the photos that the photographers on board have taken for you and you can purchase them here. They also sell some merchandise. So they have water bottles, batteries, camera equipment. They sell instant print cameras, binoculars, different things like that. And they even do these like crystal engraving picture things you can purchase there. They also have a GoPro stand. Purchase GoPros, they even have the newest ones, the tins are here, as well as all the accessories and photo frames, photo books. Oh, I like this one. It's like a porthole. That's really, really cool. So again, you can purchase all of that here at the photo gallery. Now, just past the photo gallery, we will find Studio B Center Ice. This is the ice skating theater where you can go see ice skating shows and you can also do ice skating sessions yourself. This is what was blocking us from transversing from forward and midship on the bottom two decks. So they actually have an ice skating session going on right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Studio B is like. So there you go, we got some people ice skating right now. You see you got the theater style seats on both sides here, as well is in the middle section and they're around as well. So this is where they will do the ice skating shows. This is also where they would do laser tag. They're not currently doing it due to COVID protocols, but when they are, you'll find it in here as well. They also have some bar rail style seating around the perimeter and those big porthole windows if you wanna look out to see. So that's Studio B. So back outside Studio B, passing through the photo gallery and the art gallery, we're gonna head right to the back, the very aft portion of deck three. And this is what we are here for, the main dining room. You can see they have the hours of operation posted here as well as where to go. Typically this deck on deck three is gonna be the my time dining deck, but that can vary depending on sailing and ship. Let's head inside and take a look. All right, and we are in, look at this, it's beautiful. Got that elegant staircase in the back, goes all the way up, the beautiful chandeliers suspended from the ceiling. The artwork painted on the back wall as well as the statue of the dancer there. All very, very nice. So much like other Royal Caribbean dining rooms, this is three tiered. So we have deck three, deck four, and deck five all the way up there at the top. And again, those can be assigned in different ways. My time dining, early seating, late seating, vaccinated, non-vaccinated, just depends on the ship and the sailing. But everything is located here in the same room. So you see the big porthole windows along the sides there all the seating here in the middle a really elegant affair a lot of people love the main dining room so this is where we'll find it we'll see the entrances on deck four and deck five but this will probably be the only time we come in so there you have it and that's going to do it for deck three let's head up to deck four all right deck four will not be a bore there is a lot in store so we are here at the midship elevators and stairs we're going to just turn back really quick towards the aft section of the ship and we will find the deck four entrance of the dining room. Again, that's the same dining room that we just saw. This is just the middle level. So no need to go in there. We already know what that's like. But I did want to point out that there are doors back here that go outside. So these doors are located port and starboard. You can come outside here and it's just a nice promenade deck. You can walk around. They have shuffleboard up ahead. They have chairs the whole length. They actually have some ashtrays here because you can smoke on this side. I don't believe it's on the other side though. I think it's just this one. And you can even take it on around to the back, see out the back of the ship, go around the dining room. If you go all the way forward, you'll hit a staircase and that'll actually take you up to the helipad. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But it's a good place to come out, get some fresh air, take your mask off for a minute and just enjoy the beautiful view because this is as close to the water as you can get outside. So just wanna enjoy that. Okay, let's head back in and do the rest of deck four. So the dining room and then those outdoor doors right there. Now we're gonna turn and head towards the midship and forward sections of deck number four. So we'll see here, this is the uh, elegant staircase in the central area up to the promenade, that chandelier up above. If we turn to the left here, port side of the ship, we will find Boleros. This is the Latin lounge on board. Of course, they have the large bar in the middle. They have seating all the way around. I love this seating with the old style car. Got the Cuban style imagery there. I think that's what they're going for. And then over on this side, we have some additional seating as well as the stage because they will have live performances here, usually nightly, sometimes during the day as well. 
Now something fun with Navigator of the Seas is usually on ships like this, this side is just additional seating. And there is some additional seating here, but you'll also find a standalone Starbucks location. Now this is not included with your cruise fare and because it's a standalone, it is not included with your beverage packages either. This is all going to be an additional cost, but if you wanna get your Starbucks drinks here, you can certainly do so. They have the full menu up there and you can grab that here on deck number four midship starboard side. All right, now let's head forward and finish up the rest of deck four. All right, we now enter Casino Royale. This is the casino on board. And we are at sea today, so the casino is live and active. So I'm not going to get too close to anyone. I don't want to intrude on their fun time. But you have slot machines basically all the way around on the starboard side. The port side is where you'll find the cashier cages and the table games. Of course, they have roulette, blackjack, poker, three-card poker, different things like that, craps, all of that on board. They do have ATMs here, as well as cash machines, ticket machines to redeem your winning slot machines on both sides and they have the large bar here in the middle, centrally located. They also have the staircase back there that will take you up to the Royal Promenade. So you can access that when you want to go up there, you wanna come from the promenade down into the casino. Again, slot machines continuing on around and on this side as well. End of the table games over there. You can see we have the large porthole windows on the port side. They also have television monitors suspended up from the ceiling, usually showing live sports or something else if there's no sports going on. Change machines for the quarter pushers and some informational board here as well. And that's gonna do it for the casino. Now we can head into the schooner bar. Of course, the Royal Caribbean staple, you'll find this on every Royal Caribbean ship, nautical theme bar. And that's why you'll see the dark woods, the ropes, the mast, the ship's wheel, all that kind of stuff. And it's called the schooner bar. So of course there's going to be a bar here right as you come in from the casino. Pretty large bar too. They do have two televisions mounted there showing live sports and ship information. They'll do trivia and games here during the day. And at night they'll do a, it'll be a piano bar. They have the piano centrally located right over there. So they'll play the favorite songs, do all that entertainment. You have the large porthole windows over on that side as well. And just past the schooner bar, we see the sign for the Royal Theater. So we could go around on either side, port or starboard, to access the theater from the upper deck. You can do that here on deck four as well. But I'm gonna turn now and show you one of our favorite venues, Hooked Seafood. This is a specialty restaurant, so it does come at an additional cost. As the name would suggest, they are going to serve you lots and lots of seafood. We love the aesthetic and the design of this place. It looks like the characters and cartoons were drawn with squid ink on like the old newspaper that they would serve fish in that kind of stuff let's head inside and take a look so here we are inside hooked and they will have the bar here in the middle serving up drinks i think they also do kind of like a raw style bar you can have that as well again just check out all the theming in here they did a great job the nautical ocean tones of the pebbles have the ropes made into a wall ship's wheel there got the big beam coming across all the seashells and sail boats back there all those nautical style lights that you love to see more of the drawings and things like that and they have all this great seating right up next to these large, large porthole windows. You can look right outside to that promenade down we were on earlier and out to the ocean. Recommend coming to Hooked at an earlier dinner time so you can see the sunset. Now, if you're sailing in the summer, you'd probably be fine with a later time as well. But based on how the calendar falls and sunset time, you might want to consider that because you can get a great view from inside Hooked here as well as a delicious meal. So there you have it. That is Hooked Seafood. Now, if we turn and head forward, and regardless if we go port or starboard side here i'm on the port so i'm just going to go with that you have the windows looking across into the theater over there but you'll see royal theater because this is where you're going to access the upper level again on either side now also on either side we can come back outside here to the promenade deck if you remember i mentioned there's a staircase here forward so let's head up that and that's going to take us to the helipad so once we ascend the staircase, we just kind of head forward and we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here because technically this is gonna be on deck five, but you access it from deck four, so we're gonna include it with that part 
Now, sometimes you can also access this area on Deck 5 from the Star Lounge. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But sometimes they have the doors blocked off. You can always come this way unless they have the helipad closed due to high winds or they're using it. I wanted to point out they do have some ocean view rooms looking out the forward here. You have the bridge up top and then they actually have those panoramic ocean view rooms, floor to ceiling windows there at the top as well. But as you make your way all the way forward here, you will find the helipad so you can come up and enjoy a beautiful view and it's usually quite quite windy <laughs> but it's nice they have the benches built in you can take a look around when you're coming into port or leaving port this is a great place to be all right deck five is going to be quite alive although i don't know that these rhymes will be any longer we'll see <laughs> i did want to point out that you won't find the helipad actually listed on any deck plans that's why you need to know where to go from deck four there's usually not even any signs that indicate it so just commit that to memory but we are at deck five forward so we're gonna turn here. One thing to see here, well two actually, is the Star Lounge. So this is the entrance to the Star Lounge. This is a multi-use space. They'll do different game shows in here, different activities. They might have karaoke, they might have live performances. It could be different things. It is quite a large venue. It looks like they're just breaking down from an art auction right now. I'm just gonna try to stay out of their way here. But lots of seating here. They don't usually have all the seats in the middle. They've moved them because they're having the art stuff up. But usually this middle is kind of more open for like a dance floor and activity space. You'll see the stage there forward. Wanted to point out that they do have a bar here on the port side if you need to get drinks. They do have couches and porthole windows all along the perimeter on both sides there. And these are the doors I was talking about that you could use to get out to the helipad. But as you can see, they have those closed right now. And they have the sound and video booth back here as well. So lots of fun stuff going on in the Star Lounge. Now, right before you come into the Star Lounge, which is interesting on this ship, you will find the Diamond Club. And at night, they've been turning into this, just a pinnacle club for the highest level of the Crown and Anchor Society. So you just insert your card. If you are Diamond, Diamond Plus, or Pinnacle for the Crown and Anchor Society, you'll be granted access to the Diamond Lounge. Let's head inside. So right when you come inside, they do have the desk here where they can help you with everything that you need. You wanna to talk to them about making any reservations or doing different stuff. And then they have a food and beverage area here as well, a specialty coffee machine, and they'll have some snacks hand finger food and cookies and things like that at various points throughout the day and then they just have additional seating in here as well you can relax not the biggest one but it'll get the job done all right across from the star lounge and the diamond lounge area you can look down from the staircases here see the entrance to the royal theater you can actually look up and see all the different decks and the big skylight up above there but what we're going to do is turn around because we now find ourselves in the royal promenade of course this is a hopping area lots of stuff going on in here starting with cafe promenade this is the one spot on the ship that is open 24 hours a day so you can get different kinds of snacks and drinks here they do have a bar attached so you can visit there if you need those specialty drinks or alcoholic drinks but you can come in here they'll have like different kind of like a little olive bar vegetable cheese bar there they'll have some fresh fruit sandwiches during breakfast they might have muffins or croissants or things like that usually have a selection of desserts like here they have some tarts and cakes and bars some cookies and this is also where you'll get pizza you see it back there there is no sorrentos on the ship so you get pizza here at the cafe promenade and then they'll have all your toppings and condiments over here as well and they also have a drink station back here with water or lemon water lime water sometimes and uh, regular and decaf coffee teas hot chocolate these are all included with your cruise fare and they have additional seating in the back as well you can see the main seating area inside there they also have some seats actually out on the promenade as well now across from cafe promenade we will find playmaker sports bar and arcade of course this is an additional cost venue drinks or food will cost you additional here but you can see all the tvs they have out on the promenade inside the restaurant itself because this is a sports bar this is where you're going to come to watch sports they also have some arcade games inside they have the large bar across the middle in the back there all the different tables big size small size some tables out on the promenade as well including a foosball table 
that's something different. They do have the tabletop shuffleboard. You can see here he's getting that ready. And if you actually come in the back and around the corner here, you'll find some different seating and the owner's box. So the owner's box is first come, first serve. It is usually free of charge, but uh, you can reserve this usually in advance on the cruise. Uh, it depends on the ship though. Sometimes they won't let you reserve it. Uh, but if they do, it's once you're actually on board, not before your cruise, but your party can have this to themselves, private event. And you see they have TVs in here all the way around because they have this kind of like oval, almost rectangular shaped uh, seating that wraps around there. So that's really cool. You can do the owner's box, have like kind of a private affair going on in there. They also have a billiards table on the other side. So again, TVs, drinks, food, and fun. You can find it all here at Playmakers. So just past Playmakers and Cafe Promenade, remember I mentioned they had the bar here at the Cafe Promenade. Connected to that, they have Ben and Jerry's. This is an additional cost venue, so you will have to pay for this. You can also get some specialty coffee drinks and stuff here as well. But they have different Ben and Jerry's flavors like Chunky Monkey, uh, Cherry Garcia, coffee. Ooh, the strawberry cheesecake. That's one of my favorites. All at an additional cost, but all very delicious. So you can get that here at the Ben and Jerry's stand. Next to that, they do have the Coke Freestyle Machine. So if you have a drink package, you are receiving a souvenir Royal Caribbean Coca-Cola style cup. You can put that there. Use the Freestyle Machines to get the drinks that you'd like. And across from those, we'll see some seating out here, tables and chairs, because this is the Copper and Clover. This is the English style pub on board. So everything you would come to expect of course you're gonna have the big bar in the back there dark woods and uh, a lot of time they'll have live entertainment at night on that little stage there acoustic guitar is usually the flavor but it can vary and have different things but it's an intimate space a lot of people like to come in here have fun gather it gets lively at night here at the copper and clover or any english pub on board any royal caribbean ship and i also like the little dog statue that they have hidden behind this table and chair. There's a collar too. Let's see. Return to Queen Fiona, Navigator of the Seas. I wonder if that's a reference to when they had DreamWorks characters on board Royal Caribbean. That's pretty cool. Now across from the pub, we will find to dry for, and this is the only ship that you will find this on. This is a blow dry bar. So you can come in here. You can sit down at one of the treatment chairs. You can get hair treatments, haircuts, stylizations. They do different kinds of things in there. And you can also get drinks while you're doing that. So it is a bar, but they'll also treat you and do those different things inside of there at to dry for. This is an additional cost. So if you're gonna have a treatment done, you will need to pay for it, but this is where you can come and do it. And right next to to dry for, you will find the sign that says Casino Royale. This is that staircase that I mentioned earlier that you can take straight down into the casino. So next door to the Copper and Clover, we will find the collection. And this is the like uh, Royal Caribbean store on board. So all your Crown and Anchor merchandise. But they will have some other things here. Like they do have some jewelry, watches, stuff like that. They have fragrances and cosmetic things over there, some bags. But then the rest of the store is pretty much gonna be dedicated to Royal Caribbean stuff and specifically Navigator of the Seas items. So mugs, hats, bags, spirit jerseys, different kind of things. They do have sunglasses back here, um, some toys as well. Lots of fun stuff, so if you want to get your souvenir shopping on, this is where you'll come into the collection. So across from the collection and next to To Drive For, we'll find one of our favorite venues on board, which is the Bamboo Room. So you will find the Bamboo Room on Navigator of the Seas as well as its sister ship, Mariner of the Seas. They were added during Royal Amplification. As you can see, it's tiki time. So they have a lot of specialty drinks here. So a lot of stuff that they do different than other areas. You can buy a Cliff the Parrot souvenir mug here. And uh, you can even get some food, some small plates there at an additional cost, but they do have some things like that inside. And they have the Volkswagen thing parked right outside here on the promenade to add to the ambiance. So you can see the like uh, hatch roof there, got the palm fronds up top. And as we go in, they'll continue with the plants. They have the tiki's down below. And then they're gonna have this like ambiance of South Pacific, Polynesian, Hawaiian mix, right? All those kind of things where you would find a tiki or tropical inspired location. And these are really cool. These uh, big frames that stick out from the wall. They look like pictures, but every so often Cliff the Parrot will pop up and they'll talk to you and say different things. It's a really, really cool experience. They have the old record player, the booths. I love the colors. They have the fun pillows down below. 
and over here they have the bar of course got to have a bar inside they'll take good care of you there i love this one this is a uh, digital porthole so you get to look out there at the south pacific waters take that in here are some of the cliff the parrot souvenir mugs if you choose to buy one of those and i really like this part the neon sign it's tiki time so there you go that is the bamboo room and there's cliff hi cliff good to see you buddy as always so that is the bamboo room let's go outside and finish the rest of the promenade so right next door to the bamboo room we will find regalia fine jewelry and luxury watches as the sign would suggest that's what they're going to be selling in here so if you're looking for some jewelry you'll want to head inside there they'll get you taken care of now across from that we have port merchants and this is where you're going to come if you're looking to buy alcohol tobacco or even snacks because they do have some candies in here hi and they have like different toiletries medicines things like that that you can purchase inside here as well so all that stuff here inside port merchants so next to port merchants only one other thing to show on the royal promenade and that is the voom desk the internet at sea if you need help with your wi-fi you can visit them there during their hours of operation one thing i wanted to point out about the promenade though you'll see these windows up above those are actually state rooms they are interior rooms they're called promenade views so they have all these windows that look down into the promenade so deck six deck seven and then deck eight is tilted down so you can get a better view from being up higher and they go the whole span of the promenade and you can stay in them it's really cool really cool experience we did that on independence of the seas and it's really neat to get to see all the stuff that goes on in the promenade from those rooms and there's our sign and our statue is getting it all right measuring it out making sure everything's level but because we have reached that sign that means we have concluded the royal promenade but we have not concluded deck five so let's finish that up right now over here on the port side we will find the r bar so this is just a bar on board see they'll have the bar here right when you come in of course lots of tables chairs couches loungers i like this one the uh, picture frame couch nice photo spot there already framed out for you they do have some porthole windows looking out to basically lifeboats but all the same allows some natural light in during the day and if we wrap around here to the starboard side of deck five of this area first of all we'll find where they'll put some paper cruise compasses out though they don't have any right now uh, if they're not delivering your room you can just grab those there and we'll have an atm if you need to get cash on board remember there was one in the casino as well this is the guest services desk any questions you have any concerns you can visit them they'll get you taken care of all the way down to there and then right here we have the shore excursion desk hey if you're looking to buy a shore excursion if you haven't done it already before your cruise you can visit them here they'll get you all set up for whatever ports you are visiting last thing to show here on deck five is the entrance to the dining room for this deck of course we already saw it when we went on on deck three but you can also enter here if you're assigned on deck five and they do have the menus display on each deck as well but that is going to be the last thing on deck five let's head up to six up on deck six now and deck six is mostly staterooms but there's one small thing to show here right off the midship elevators and stairs which is the next cruise desk so of course you can come here and put a deposit down on your next cruise and for doing so they will give you onboard credit or cash off of your next adventure normally they have flyers here that you can grab and take with the uh, various cruises that are coming up and itineraries I guess because of COVID, they don't have those, so they're asking you to ask the staff for that. There is some seating here, and they do have the desk here. Again, there's your offer breakdown for booking at the next cruise desk. So you can get that added on. They'll get you booked on the next one, and you'll be all set, ready to go. That's the only thing besides staterooms on deck six. Let's go up to number seven. All right, deck seven is almost a duplicate of deck six. It is mostly staterooms. One thing to show here right off the midship elevators and stairs is the library and card room. I'm not gonna be talking very much because it's a library and a card room. So let's just go inside and I'll show you what it looks like. So obviously they have some tables and chairs in there where you can play cards, gather, do different games. And uh, it's a library as well. So as you saw on the other side, they did have the books there in the shelf. A lot of ships haven't been doing that because of COVID, but this one still has them out here in the library. And that is going to do it for deck number seven. Let's go to eight. Deck number eight has me feeling great, although maybe not you because the rhymes have returned. Yikes. But I'm feeling great because this is just staterooms. Nothing to show here. We're going to nine. Feeling fine on deck nine. Again, just staterooms, nothing doing. 
10 it is. Deck 10 is my friend because just staterooms. Nothing to show here, but that's gonna end our tic-tac-toe there of decks with just staterooms. Once we get up to 11, there's a big party. Lots of stuff going on up there. Let's go check it out, deck 11 on the way. All right, deck 11 is where the party is at because this is the pool deck. We'll get to that in just a bit. First, we need to head aft here, check out a couple of dining venues as well as our Windjammer Buffet, Windjammer Marketplace right there on the side, Chops Grill and Jamie's Italian, two specialty restaurants also located in. So you scan your C-Pass card there, wash your hands, and then you're good to go inside. There we go. It's <laughs> a little serenade you with the hand washing songs as you come in. So right when we come into the Windjammer here in the center area, you will find the bar. If you want to get some drinks, you can do that there. Now, as for the Windjammer itself, it's pretty much going to be a mirror image on the port side and on the starboard side. You're going to have all these colorful chairs because that was added during Royal Amplification. Plenty of tables. They'll go around and you'll have the floor to ceiling windows all the way around. They'll have the food served on the interior but before we do that let's check out our specialty restaurants let's go ahead and head over here to the port side to chops grill this is the steakhouse on board royal caribbean steakhouse it is a specialty restaurant so it comes at an additional cost but let's head inside and take a look so we come in here to chop steakhouse of course it's a bit more formal a bit more elegant in here they do have the two tops all along here floor to ceiling windows you can take in that beautiful view and if you time it right get a great sunset view and the restaurant continues all the way back here to the back room as well where they'll have some larger tables even some booth style seating available there some wine stored in the cabinet and the windows do continue so if you're looking for a steak this is where you want to come chops grill all right so directly across from chops grill on the starboard side we will find the entrance to jamie's italian this is a specialty restaurant as well so it does come at an additional cost as the name suggests it is italian fare and it's from celebrity chef jamie oliver it's very good let's head inside and take a look so right when we come in we'll see that pasta maker there they have on display making that fresh pasta every day and then the tables and chairs throughout of course because it's a dining venue they have some right up against the wall and we have those floor to ceiling windows just like we had in chops grill they even offer some booth style seating in here as well and there is a back room so it's kind of a mirror of chops just obviously decorated very very different this is a lot more casual feel to it a lot more homey feel to I like the mix match of chairs and colors and the tables are different and things like that. Have the wine store back here. Large booth seating over there on the back wall, but you are still getting those beautiful windows that you can look out and enjoy the view. All right, let's go check out the Windjammer. All right, so back outside of Jamie's and Chops, you see again the bar there in the middle. And as we continue along, you'll start to see that layout that I mentioned where you'll have the food on the interior and the seating on the exterior. You will find beverage stations kind of more tucked on the exterior side of things. But of course, there's gonna be a ton of seating here. They are currently spacing uh, for COVID protocols. So that's always good to see. But lots of different sizes of tables here. Two top, four top, six top, eight top. They even have these large circular booths here that you can sit in, which is pretty awesome. And then this is the main food section you'll find all of this stuff back here all these different uh areas these different islands have different things going on based on what the day is different sections you can get your food and then a large seating section right here on the back of the ship the very aft you can take in the beautiful wake view during the day or just enjoy some dark and peace and quiet at night so again it's going to be a mirror image the other side is going to look like what we just saw on this side so that's pretty much going to do it for Windjammer. let's head back out and see the rest of deck 11. All right, before we proceed, let's take a look at our map here just to help us get oriented. So we're at the midship, elevators and stairs, and you can see Windjammer, Chops, Jamie's, that's it in the back. So now we're gonna head outside this yellow, it means that it's going to be an outdoor area. Now the front of deck 11 is just stateroom, so we won't have anything to see there, but we're gonna check out the main pool deck area right now. 
All right, so we're outside now. They have the live Caribbean music playing. They got a stage right up there. You can see them playing. And you see that beautiful color for the lime and coconut bar. We do have the Caribbean style pool deck. It was added during Royal Amplification for Navigator of the Seas. I love this little splash area, a little colorful play area with the water dripping down there. We have the main pools and hot tub behind us there, or in front of us, excuse me, behind the splash area. And um, I'm gonna head up to deck 12 and give us the bird's eye view of this area in just a second. But a couple of things I wanted to point out before we head up there. You're gonna find a couple of dining venues on either side. So on the port side, you're going to find Johnny Rockets, but not just any Johnny Rockets. This is Johnny Rockets Express. So there's no actual dining. There's not an actual diner that you can go inside of and eat like on other ships. This is basically to go. Now you have do have tables and chairs outside here on the pool deck that you can eat at, but it's not going to be inside that diner that you've come to know and love. The menu works a little bit different too. It's not a cover charge and then you can order whatever you want. You can get the different items, those costs, and then you know if you add something, you'll have to pay additional for that. But you do have Johnny Rockets Express here on the port side, and then something else really fun over on starboard side. Let's go check that out. So over here on the starboard side, we will find a Loco Fresh. This is a Mexican Tex-Mex kind of thing, whatever you want to call it. And this is included with your cruise fare. So quesadillas, tacos, burritos, you can do nachos. They can get your food set up right here. Different areas, they'll serve it to you right all up there. Burritos, quesadillas are already made, ready to go. Tacos, you get the tortilla, tell them what you want. They'll put it on there. You do have a drink station back there as well. And then we have a salsa station here. They will get you all the toppings you need. Guac, lime, sour cream, cheese, different kinds of salsa, lettuce, tomato. And then you do have a hot sauce selection down here at the end. You can add any of those flavors to your meal. We absolutely love El Loco Fresh. It's absolutely delicious. And again, included with your cruise fare. So it's free. Might as well take advantage of it. All right, let's go ahead and jump ahead of ourselves. We're going to go up to deck 12 to give you the bird's eye view back here of deck 11, the pool deck area. Let's take a look. All right, so here is that bird's eye view of the pool deck area. You see the splash area right there in the front and then the two sides of the pool. So one on starboard, one on port. They are somewhat connected. They do have that shelf in the middle there so it is water there's water covering it but it's extremely shallow you can sit they have those green lounge chairs down there you can chill out in different uh, areas you can sit down on or you can just go for a swim in the actual pools themselves you do have a hot tub located in the back as well right there there are going to be other hot tubs on this ship I'll show you actually you can see of two of them one right here and the other right there so up above here uh, overlooking the pool deck a really nice option and then you see the lime and coconut bar in the middle back there. It's just easier to kind of get the layout of the pool deck area from above. But now let's head back down and we'll check out the rest of deck 11. Oh, and one thing to point out here on deck 11 as we head forward is that the port side of the ship does have a smoking area. You'll find it here in between these white metal palm fronds. That is the smoking area. So as I mentioned before, we do have the lime and coconut bar here in the middle, a very popular selection on Navigator of the Seas and other ships that have received the Royal Amplification. They'll get you all your tropical drinks right there at the lime and coconut. Wanted to point out though, on either side of that, you will see these like camper style facades. So this one's just basically a photo opportunity. They have a booth you can go inside and take a photo. But on the other side, it actually serves a utility purpose because it is going to be the soft serve location on board. As you can see, the sign there says soft serve. So this is where you'll come to get your soft serve cones. Usually it's vanilla, chocolate, or swirl. Sometimes they have different flavors though. You can get that right there included with your cruise fare. So of course you're gonna have tables, chairs, and loungers on either side of the pool deck. Um, one other thing to show on the starboard side. Let's head over there before we go into the solarium. Okay, I lied. It's actually two other things here on the starboard side at the pool deck right before you go into the solarium. One is the Paddy Dive Center. This is where you can sign up for scuba diving classes. You can also buy snorkeling gear, lanyards, swim shirts, other things like that. And across from that, you will find the life vest racks. These are free to use if someone should need them. You can get those from there. And next to that, you will find the towel station. Again, of course, free to use. They'll scan them out with your seat pass card, grab the towels you need, and then you return them. If you don't return them, by the end of the cruise they will charge you for them but you can get those right here all right now let's head forward into the solarium 
So as we enter the solarium, you'll see there's tables, chairs, couches, day beds, lots of stuff here on either side. I want to point out they do have some cubbies here, which is really nice to store your things if you're going to get in the pool or the hot tub. I'll show you the pools and the hot tubs from up on deck 12 like we did the pool deck. It's just easier to see them that way. But I want to point out the solarium bar here in the middle. You can get your drinks here. They'll get you taken care of. You do have some other cubbies on the other side as well. Let's head up to deck 12 and get that bird's eye view of the solarium pool area. All right, so up above here, you can look down into the solarium pool area. You see, it's just a standard pool. Nothing too fancy to it. Some solariums have bridges or art statues. This one does not. Just have the solarium bar back there in the middle. And then you do have the hot tubs on either side. One there and one down there as well. And again, those loungers, day beds, couches, those continue on both sides. Plenty of lounge space down there at the solarium. So one final thing to show in the solarium on either side here, you will find these glass doors that kind of really don't say anything. There's not really a sign next to them. But if you come over, you'll see that they open up. It's just kind of like a little wing walk area. So you can just kind of walk here and uh, just come out and enjoy the view. Not really much more to it than that, but something nice if you want to get away and uh, enjoy the ocean. And as we check our map, we see that deck 11 ends with the solarium because the forward part is just stateroom. So we are done here on 11. Time for number 12. All right, deck number 12 where we find ourselves right now. And there's a lot of stuff to get into on this deck. So right here at the forward section of deck 12, we'll turn and we will find the Vitality Spa. So you head right in here, Vitality at Sea. That is the name of the spa. Come in here. This is the reception desk area. They'll check you in right here. They do have the salon on around and the treatment rooms, different things like that. If you have a spa treatment plan or some kind of other booking they'll get you taken care of back there but you'll check in and visit with them here all right outside on deck 12 now we're going to start making our way aft you'll see that this is the sun deck so there's going to be lots of lounge chairs and these casitas these casitas were free to use when we first sailed on navigator of the seas then we sailed on odyssey of the seas they were charging for them but on this ship right now in this sailing they've had them closed except for four down on deck 11 right at the pool so not sure what's going on with that but all of these up here have been closed Wanted to point out that there is the entrance to Navigator Dunes here on deck 12. We'll get to that a little bit later because that's technically up on deck 13, but I will cover that. Also wanted to point out here in the middle, you'll see this sign says the Lime and Coconut Rooftop because the Lime and Coconut is actually two decks, well, kind of three. So there's another bar area around. I'll show you just in the middle, uh, just in a minute. But let's go ahead and skip a little bit forward. I guess you could maybe technically call this deck 13 since it's up above deck 12, but since you're it's attached to the thing that's on deck 12 i'll go ahead and show it so it's just a big rooftop area here they have the lights turn on at night which are really beautiful you know just some lounge space just some hangout space gather have your drinks from the lime and coconut bar and just enjoy the beautiful view of the pool deck enjoy the live music that's being played and enjoy the views of the ocean also should point out that deck 12 is where you will find the running and jogging track it kind of goes around here and on both sides port and starboard between the sun lounges it is a very tight space so i would say this is one of the most inconvenient running track areas for both the runners and the people just trying to get through it does cut through there and then goes around the large video board there in the center so just keep that in mind as i mentioned there is an upper bar area of the lime and coconut you can find that right here as well as some bar rail seating and then some colorful loungers tables chairs they got some high tops with some like like stool style seating you got some that's covered so you can get out of that hot sun if you need to and then of course the stage over there for the live performances now from this point on until we get to the back it's pretty much going to be the same thing you're going to have these lounge chairs you're going to have the casitas you're going to have the like dome day beds and then again the large video board in the middle so that's pretty much it for this area i'm not going to really cover it in detail it's just kind of the same thing on either side we are going to start walking back now though and head to the aft section and check out the rest of deck 12. All right, back inside on deck 12 and we find ourselves at the midship elevators and stairs. So again, we just saw this whole area. We saw the spot at the front, then it was just staterooms. Then here in the middle was the upper deck of the pool deck area with the jogging track, the two hot tubs, the lime and coconut upper deck area, things like that. And now we will see the back, the aft part of deck 12. So two different things here. If we kind of enter here, sort of in the middle, you'll see the sign here. 
that points out the two different directions. So Vitality at Sea Fitness Center is here to the right, more on the port side of the ship. Now this is a bit of a change. They did this during Royal Amplification. Usually fitness centers are with the spa at the forward part of the ship. And that's different now on this ship. And I think it's actually really cool. You have some restrooms here and there's restrooms throughout the ship as well. Just wanted to point those out right there. It's kind of have a long hallway back here. See the other sign here, Vitality at Sea Fitness Center. Go ahead inside and take a look here. So they have some uh, resistance machines, a different kind of workout equipment inside here, as you would expect for a fitness center. Yeah. And different kinds of equipment that you can use. You have TV mounted in here. Watch live sports and things like that. Have some porthole windows so you can see out as well. And then you'll see different treadmills, ellipticals, all that kind of stuff inside here. And as we make our way all the way into the back, we will find bars, the weights, dumbbells, free weights, things like that back here. You can usually go outside here, although it says unavailable, I'm not sure. But this just kind of goes outside to the back deck by the flow rider and under the, uh, the water slides there as well. If we come around this side, you can see the sign says aerobics. Some other restrooms in here. Another TV mounted up. And this is the area that they will do different classes, I believe, or you can just come and use this equipment, I think, as well. So they have some yoga mats, foam rollers, the uh, little half dome things, and then they have like the spin machines where they do a spin class. They do have some other dumbbells here as well. Water fountain, which is unavailable right now, and then some medicine balls, exercise balls. They have additional equipment stored in here. Also wanted to point out right when you come in they do have some different lockers which are stylized very fun as well as some towels that you can get and the towel drop for the used ones. That's going to do it for the fitness center. So towards the port side we have the Vitality at Sea Fitness Center. Starboard side is going to be Adventure Ocean and the Challengers Arcade. So Adventure Ocean is the kids area on board Royal Caribbean ships. The Challengers Arcade is free, well not free but it's open to use <laughs> for anyone any age. It does come at an additional cost and I'll always give you this little tip if you know you're going to play in the arcade during a cruise you should purchase arcade credits on the cruise planner ahead of your cruise you'll get those at a 20 percent discount so let's go ahead and head inside the arcade here so challengers arcade we head inside here they want to point out right when you come in they do have a prize hub so you can redeem your virtual tickets those are tracked on your seat pass card or your arcade card if you use one of those it's not the biggest arcade in the world but it does have some different offerings including the uh, virtual reality jurassic arcade game the virtual reality racer game they do have the different shooters and uh skill games there that's where you can get credits for the arcade card over on that machine do have sonic racing like a flappy bird kind of thing the big mouth bass spinner plucky ducky our favorite game laughing madness with all the crazy miniature pucks for air hockey they do have the banked regular air hockey tables here some ski ball over on this side the fun blue and green ones love that fruit ninja monkey ball piano keys winner's cube claw stacker all that fun stuff and some llama unicorns so you can run from a claw machine as well so that's going to do it for challengers arcade so right outside challengers arcade you'll see it says adventure ocean over here on the wall and then on this one it says the royal babies and tots so this is kind of like the nursery area they have their hours posted there i'm not going to go inside but you can see through it it's just kind of like point well, kind of see through just a little check-in area and that's just an area that they'll uh, take care of the young ones inside there at the nursery over here on adventure ocean this is the hours of operation again this is the kids zone so not really go inside there either i don't even think they're open right now but you can see inside there they have the big play area one thing that's cool is they have this miniature rock climbing wall inside there for the kiddos and then all the way in the bank you can see the tvs they'll do different activities games stuff like that all inside here at adventure ocean checking in on our map to help us stay oriented so we saw the fitness center and the aerobics room then we saw the video arcade with the nursery and adventure ocean on the side actually going to go outside and around right now to show you the other thing on deck 12 because you actually access it from outside you see these stairs here from deck 13 that's the living room it's the teen space on board let's go take a look at that 
And as I've come out here on deck 12 and I'm heading towards the back, you can see sports court deck 13 with the flow rider, all that stuff there. And then the sign down below says the living room via deck 13 up those stairs there. So here on deck 13, all the way aft at the flow rider, we'll show this in more detail in just a minute. I wanted to point out though, right next to this uh, seating here on the starboard side, you'll see it says the living room down. That's where we're headed. And as we come down the stairs, we find ourselves right at the living room. This is called the back deck part. It's the outdoor section. You have some colorful Adirondack chairs and tables here that are free for anyone to use. Once you go through this trellis though, it is the teens area. So they do have some uh, lounge space out here for them. Some cool chairs, got the TV play in there and then some big couches over here on this side. And now they can actually go in to the living room through those doors when it's open. It is a teens only space though. So we're not gonna be able to go inside, but that's where they would access it, do some different activities and hang out in there. And with that, we have completed deck number 12. So we can head right back up these stairs and start deck 13. Let's go do it. Okay, apologies for the change in audio. We had a lot of wind noise on this day and it required us to re-record from home for these outdoor parts. But as you can see here, we have the Flowrider. This is the surf simulator on board. They have boogie boarding sessions as well as stand-up sessions, as you can see here. And over on the sides, we do have stadium bench style seating, so you can come and watch people doing the flow rider. Up here, there's also some colorful seating. This used to be hammocks. Uh, those have been removed. Not sure what's going on there, but right now just seats. But here is the main attraction for this area, the perfect storm water slides. And you can head up the stairs here to access those perfect storm water slides. We think these are the best water slides of any cruise ship, at least any we've been on. And you can see over on the port side of the ship, you have the blaster, which is the water coaster. But here, let's start on the starboard side with Riptide. Now this is a forward facing mat slide. Now it's not a mat racer, like we see at Perfect Day at Coco Cay or other places because you were the only one going. Uh, but it is a much longer slide than that. And it's uh, also much faster. So you're on the mat, you have your own, you're forward facing, you're going through the tube, going around the curves there. These parts have the colored lights. When the sunlight hits, it looks like flashing lights. Oh, there you go. You see someone going through the clear tube section there. That goes out over the side of the ship. And then you have the splashdown here at the bottom. And across from that splashdown, this is where you will pick up the mats. So you just grab a mat there, head to the stairs, and head up to access the slides. You can see them both right up there at the top. And over on the other side, on the port side of the ship, we have the blaster. As I mentioned, this is the water coaster. We think this is the singular best water slide at sea. You can see you get on board there, up at the top, get in your tube, either one or two people. And you do have those, uh, again, those colored slats so that when the sunlight comes through, it looks like flashing lights. It's a really cool effect. Come down, go around the curve, and then you start the up and down. It's a water coaster, so it's going. the water's going to be propelling you uphill you're going to be sliding back downhill and that's going to repeat over and over again another colored section there with the lights flashing as you come through and then you'll go down and this is open air anytime you go down or up the hill it's going to be open air then back in the closed tube you have another open air section that goes right by the rock climbing wall right by the basketball court you can see it over there and then once you get through that part you actually enter the longest stretch of a water slide at sea that is suspended out over the side of the ship so this entire part over the port side of the ship is directly above the water, like 13 stories up. So you come out there on the yellow section by the rock, into the rock climbing wall, and then it's up, down, up, down, up, down with that water coaster style effect, all open air on this section. And you just keep doing that over and over again, suspended right above the sea, up and down, up and down. You see the splashdown area here at the end, but the really cool part is you do the up downs and then at the back, you have this clear tube section, so you can look straight down to the water, you can look right back aft and look at that beautiful wake view. You can look out to the port side. You have to look quick because it goes by fast, but you have that option. It's really, really cool. And then we turn around here, and again, there's the splashdown section of the, uh, of the slide there. That's where it ends. And then this is the desk where you can sign up for doing water activities, like the flow rider or other things. And then you can just... Uh, you can head up the stairs there. Oh, wanted to point out that you actually don't need to carry a tube up for the blaster like you carry the mat for the Riptide. They have a lift system that takes it right up to the top. So you just pick it up right there. They'll have it ready for you. You just head up the stairs and uh, get in the tube at the top. Oh, I wanted to point out here is where they have posted the safety information, height and weight requirements. If you're interested in those, check out our day six vlog. We'll have all of that for you there. All right, we got those water slides covered. Let's proceed forward here on deck. 
13 will find our basketball court. They see they have the two rims here, one on each side. It is a full-size court. So you can get your basketball on here in the open air. And then behind that, the rock climbing wall. Of course, included with your cruise fare, just sign up and head up the wall during the hours of operation and ring that bell when you get to the top. Before we head inside and finish deck number 13, wanted to point out that they do have a ping pong table here as well. And you're gonna see some outdoor seating areas next to the rock climbing wall on either side here. So you can go up the stairs and access it only if though you are a sweet guest. This is part of the sweet lounge. We'll show you the entrance to that in just a minute, but this is the outdoor area for that. They have these funny statues up there, but then it's just a seating area, standard seating area up there, outdoor, again, for guests staying in a suite. And I said outdoor seating areas on either side. I was technically wrong about that. So you do have the suite lounge uh, sun deck over on that side and the starboard side. On the port side though, these stairs are just where you access the rock climbing wall. You can go up there and get a view though, if it is open, but there's not any actual seating up there. So a correction on that. All right, we have restrooms right here. Again, located throughout the ship. I'm gonna head inside now and we'll continue with deck 13. Real quick I wanted to show this cool uh, artwork and, and stylization of the signs if you access the sports court from inside here on deck 13. So checking out our map on deck 13 here we see the flow rider access to the living room perfect storm water slides the sports court we saw all of that so that's it because this is just open air there is no deck here it's just down to deck number 12 in fact if we come over here we're at the midship elevators and stairs right now if we come over and look out the window you can see it's open air right because that is deck 11 and that is deck 12 there is no deck 13 here to connect so we have to go down to deck 12 and walk across to the forward part to see the rest of deck 13 in the front let's do that now all right, so back here on deck 12 forward, we're gonna head up to deck 13 forward to the Navigator Dunes, the mini golf course. You can access the stairs because there is not elevator access to deck 13 forward. You have to use the stairs on either the starboard side or the port side. I've come to the port side because I wanted to point out that they do have an accessible lift here on this side. So let's go ahead and head up and we'll check out deck 13 forward. So on both sides of deck 13 forward, you're going to find all these lounge chairs day beds and these fun like arch style circular style things which are actually freshwater showers so that's pretty cool the main attraction for deck 13 is the navigator dunes which you'll find all the way forward you see we have the glass all the way around so you can look out and enjoy the views so this is a nine hole mini golf course it's the same exact setup as we've seen on other ships like mariner of the seas independence of the seas oasis of the seas it's the same kind of golf course has all those fun obstacles and different things to try included with your cruise fare pick up your clubs and balls right here and put around and have a good time and as I mentioned the starboard side the exact same as the port side lounge chairs day beds fresh water shower all that they do have some colorful Adirondack chairs and day beds here in the center as well as this fun art and that's gonna do it for deck 13 I need to head all the way to the back because that's it for the forward part of the ship there is nothing higher here for guests to access so we're going to go back to the midship elevators and stairs and head to deck number 14. All right, deck 14, where we find ourselves now, as you can see by the deck map here, it is only in the back here at the midship elevators and stairs. There is no 14 or 15 or anything else forward. So we are done with that part of the ship. We are now here around the midship elevators and stairs. So we're gonna find a couple of different things here, starting court side with Izumi Japanese cuisine. So not a very huge venue, but nice enough. They have the sushi bar back there on that side. We have the picture windows, floor to ceiling, panoramic all the way around. And then the restaurant just continues around to that other side. So you see Izumi there. And the next thing you see, it says Viking Crown. Sometimes it's called Viking Crown. Sometimes it's called Cosmopolitan Club, but it's just a big uh, venue, mixed use space. Right now they're doing some Harry Potter trivia. Sometimes they'll have karaoke, different events, parties at night, but you have comfortable lounge space all the way around 
and the floor to ceiling windows all the way around. They have the stage here in the middle for performances. And then over here towards the starboard side, you will find a bar with wraparound seating. Now next to the bar, you will have the suite lounge. We are not staying in a suite, so I don't have access to that, but it's just a small lounge space inside of there. We saw the outdoor deck area earlier. So as we can see, that's going to do it for deck 14, the wall, meaning the rock climbing wall. We already saw that outside. Now there's only one thing on deck 15, and you actually access it right here next to Izumi. That is the Royal Escape Room, the observatorium. So when it's your time, they have this stairwell roped off you can see there but when it's your time to play and this does come at an additional cost but it's well worth it we find these rooms are done very very well so the uh, game master will take you up the stairs there you'll head to the left you'll watch some videos and then you'll go inside the actual room itself now I mentioned these are stairs but I want to show something here on the other side over by the suite lounge so you see the entrance to the suite lounge there again and they do have stairs on this side as well that head up to the escape room though it's not marked but what I wanted to point out is that they do have an accessible chairlift here that you can use to get up to the top should you need that. All right, friends, that is going to do it for today's tour of Royal Caribbean's Navigator of the Seas. We hope you found it helpful and informational as you start to plan your own vacation. And if you're interested in sailing on board Royal Caribbean's Navigator of the Seas or another ship in their vessel, there are many to choose from. Hey, I'll make that happen as travel agents. It would be our pleasure. It's completely free to you. We do not charge any fees or costs whatsoever, and your price will not increase a single cent more than it would be if you booked direct on your own. So feel free to reach out via that travel agent information you can find in the description of this video. You can also visit our website, HoffmanHappyTravels.com. You can reach out to us there, and you can even book directly yourself via our website. And hey, if you've already booked direct with Royal Caribbean in the past 30 days, and you're not paid in full, you can transfer your booking to our agency that is completely free of charge as well so we hope we will hear from you soon feel free to reach out whenever you are ready if you're interested in more information about navigator of the seas we'll highly encourage you to check out our playlist we had an old one from when we sailed in 2019 now we'll have this new one for the seven night mexican riviera sailing including the ship tour you've just seen our room tour and then seven daily vlogs including the three stops that we visited during this cruise of Cabo San Lucas, Mazatlan, and Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Lots of fun stuff going on there, so we highly encourage you to check out that playlist if you're interested in more content. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us for today's tour, but we're signing off for now. We'll see you next time. Happy travels!